good morning. One of my high school friends is uh, a Lutheran pastor. And so this story comes from her. It was Reformation Sunday. And as she was leaving church, uh, a little boy in the congregation came up to her, tears in his eyes, very upset. And he said, Martin Luther was a bad man. And she looked at him and she said, why do you think that? And he said, because he put his feces on the church door. You know, poop. <laughs> and she said, she, she drew him into her arms and she said, oh, honey, it's not feces. It's theses, like a fancy name for a school report. And he looked up and he said, really? Oh, okay. That was quite a few decades ago. The guy is now in his 40s. <laughs> and every Reformation Sunday, they have a little chuckle together, remembering that time when he thought Martin Luther was putting poop on the church door at Wittenberg. Yesterday we marked two kind of significant things. Reformation Sunday, I'm, I can bet you we were the only Catholic Church in the state to celebrate Reformation Sunday, and also the anniversary of the founding of Holy Redeemer <clears throat> and my ordination as a priest, 14 years. We're in the process of trying to figure out who we are, who we are and what we are doing. So part of today's message is an invitation and a plea for those of you listening who live in the area to come and check us out. We know that we are called to minister to God's people. We're located in the 06 zip code. <clears throat> there are a lot of poor families in the area. Our food bank feeds hundreds of people every Wednesday. We have another ministry that we operate out of the church. Free hot meal every Thursday out of our food truck. We have a clothing bank with some really nice clothing. The problem is this. We are an aging population. We need people to step up and get involved, or these ministries simply are going to cease to exist. Personally, I was disappointed in attendance yesterday. I expected more people, more gratitude, to be honest, for 14 years of ministry. Holy Redeemer began as the only independent Catholic entity in the state of Indiana 14 years ago with a special focus on reaching out to the ones who were hated by other denominations, in particular gays and lesbians in the Catholic Church. Curiously, that is not our primary population. 
because of fear-based religion, some people stay where they are because they've been taught that if they even think outside the man-made box, they will go to eternal damnation. How sad. Talk about feces in church. So here's the thing. I'm still kind of in the Reformation uh, framework today in my mind. Martin Luther, when he was asked, if the world were going to end tomorrow, what would you do? He didn't say, oh, I'd fall to my knees, I'd repent, I would sob for all the sins I committed, I would revisit my guilt and shame, uh, I would go make amends. No, he said, I would plant a tree. I mentioned this yesterday in my sermon. Plant a tree, meaning no matter what, even if you think the end is near, do something positive. Plant a tree in faith so that the future will be different than today. So for all of you listening out there, if you've been thinking about going to church, if you live outside this area, go find a faith community. Don't say you're just spiritual but not religious, because here's the thing. When we do that and we don't include ourselves in an actual community, number one, we, we don't have the guarantee that the Holy Spirit will be there, because the scripture makes it clear when two or three are gathered, not when one person is gathered. So that's the first thing. And the other thing is, the ego is a very sly, selfish thing. We need a community to nurture us, to hold us when we are crying in our sorrow, but also to challenge us, to help us to grow to our best selves. We can't be the monitor of our own growth because that just turns into a selfish shit show. Look at the world we're living in. I rest my case. So if you are living in town and you're one of those people who has said to me, and there are hundreds of you, oh, I should come check it out sometime. Now is your time. We need you. We need people who are willing to listen to the voice of God. People willing to put their 95 theses on the church door. Tell us what you need and want in a faith community. We are in the process of discerning our future. We need all those who want to be part of something bigger than themselves without judgment or condemnation to really step up right now. Or like I said, we will not have a food bank or a clothing bank. We will not be able to feed 295 families again this Thanksgiving like we're planning to do. The time is now. God's theses are on the door. They're just waiting for you to maybe take a gander at them and choose to do something different. Let's pray. Loving God, author of life, source of all being, open our hearts today to the theses of the gospel of Jesus Christ, your only begotten. Help us to set aside our comfort. Help us to set aside our reluctance to commit and to see that the gospel promises us freedom if we would just surrender to its power. Be with us today. In a special way, we ask your blessing on all those ministers of the gospel those who work tirelessly, sometimes without any gratitude given to them. Keep them strong in the faith. Let them sleep well at night knowing that they
they always have you, but you always uphold them. Amen. Happy Monday.